All right. Uh, our next speaker is Atakan Pirat, also from MIT, and he will be talking about the instanton superpotentials in type two string theory on Calbio 3 mod omega. Okay. Thank you. First of all, thanks for the organizer to inviting me here to give a talk about our work. So this is a work in progress with this four other gentlemen. And uh, we are going to, uh, basically what we plan to do is that, uh, what we did is that to fix the normalization in the, uh, I'm sorry, I'm having, okay. To fix the normalization of the super potential in the Calabio tree uh, oriented faults. Um, so here's my outline. First, I'm going to introduce uh, why, why we care about this, such a normalization of the super potential. And then I'm going to explain the, the, the ingredients that goes into it. This was pre 2D CFD heavy computation. And so I need to introduce the, what does oriented folding means and uh, yeah, uh, all of the instantons from the understanding from the 2D uh, CFT point of view. We are going to encounter some issues and these issues, uh, especially when we are trying to compute the normalization, we, we can show that the, like these issues can be solved by string field theory methods, which I will spend most of my time on. And then I'm going to uh, use that methods to fix the normalization. Then I will uh, show that the super potential that we get is holomorphic in moduli, then I will conclude. So. I, I don't need to stress enough that the uh, you know string theorists ex need to explain the real world and uh, we use uh, we want some amount of supersymmetry for control but not too much. Uh, so one controlled way is that as Manke has explained in the previous talk is that n equals one supersymmetry n equals four. So the the model today the, the model I'm going to consider today is that the type two theory on the Calabial trifold or other stringy compactifications is as I said we are going to work on the. 2D CFT, so it's independent of if there's a geometric meaning or not. But usually, you know, when we do this compactification, we get n equals two to z in d equals four. And uh, when we try to do n equals one, what we usually do is that take this Colby out and just uh, do an orientable projection. So this is the model that I'm going to consider today. And then the, the next thing that we ask is that uh, how does low energy physics look like and define the spectrum? And uh, you know, th these can be done very easily. Then the, we ask the, about the interactions and the interactions are encoded in the super potential as usual. And there's a, there might be a perturbative part, non-perturbative part. So today the, I'm going to consider a non-perturbative part that are coming from the D instantons. Uh, these are the, uh, the some D brains that Euclidean D brains that wrap some cycle in the uh, Calabria three folds. And they're like from D equals four perfect and they are just points. That's, that's why I call the instantons. And their presence will uh, induce some interaction between the low energy fields. Uh, and then, yeah, we, we, can, we, can, we, can, uh, we can basically try to compute that. So the expectation for this, uh, the super potential from single D instanton wrapping the cycle gamma is this form. You know, we have the usual e to the minus t, the, where minus t is at the instant on action. And uh, here the files are complex moduli field. So in this talk, I'm not going to pick a certain, I'm going to agnostic about the model that I talk about to, because it's going to cover all the possibilities. And then the, yeah, so the files are generally some complex moduli fields and there's going to be some normalization. So this is going to be our uh, main objective to, to, to compute here. So this can be, Computed using the instanton amplitudes, which we can schematically write in this form. So you know we have like a usual uh, disk amplitudes associated where the like the one of the disks is ending on the instantons. But on top of this, we need to consider the bubble diagrams of this sort as well because we are going to add this amplitudes on top of perturbative uh, string amplitudes, which might uh, give a relative factor. So these are actually physical. So he, they are going to be exponentiated as usual. So here we have this. This is a usual one over GS factor corresponding to here. Uh, but we, are, we need to also consider this uh, analysis diagrams, which is a G string to the zero, uh, which, uh, which is going to be some number. Uh, but the problem here is that, as we will see, these are usually IR divergent. And uh, when you try to do worksheet computations, they give you an ambiguous answers. And uh, we, need to, we need some sort of a regularization procedure to compute that. Usually if there's a higher uh, supersymmetry, this can be fixed. But in the situation that I consider today, they are, uh, you know, we, we need to only, we, get, we, we need to use string filter methods to actually compute this. 
So then, the, like after we have done that, we can compare the n equals one d equals four sugra to to uh, to find this number right there, and then we can check if it is holomorphic or not in modulo. So today, uh, you know, basically what I'm going to do is that, like, I'm going to calculate this this number uh, using the string field theory from first principles and establish its holomorphy. And here's my final result. So you know, there's going to be some numbers, uh, some you know, uh, the gravitational constant and the uh, you know the, the action dependence and some g zero, and as you can see, for example, it's it's consistent, right? The like this emerge under Kähler transformation, and later I'm going to show it's holomorphic as well. Okay, so let me briefly give a basics on the worksheets on the Calabria tree oriented folds and the instant tones. I'll be real quick here, but I'm happy to answer questions if there is any. So I'm going to consider type two theory. It can work in type two B or type two A. Uh, but uh, usually we use type 2b because it's uh, easier for Mershi because it has a identical GSO projection in both sides. So, you know, what, what, I, what I'm going to have is that uh, non-compact fields, x mu, psi mu, I will have gold, my ghost, uh, bc ghost and beta gamma ghost. And I'm going to add a two comma two super conformal field theory. Again, like this can be some nonlinear sigma model corresponding to some Calabria or some other stringy compactification. Our methods won't distinguish them. Uh, and it works both cases. And uh, again, this is total central charge zero. This will give n equals two to z n equals four by usual arguments. The, the, on top of this, I'm going to orient, orient fold, do the orient folding. So from a perspective, it's going to be some uh, operation that is going to be of this sort, where I'm going to exchange the left and right moving side, maybe some uh, you know geometric uh, operation on the, the, the this uh, internal CFD. And I'm going to take the, uh, the omega equals one sector project to this, and uh, this will eliminate the half of the Suzy to give me n equals one to z equals four. Okay, these are the, the, the two ingredients that goes into here. So next, I want to describe the instant tones from this perspective. Uh, again, do, I want to consider the instant tone. That means that uh, I need to impose the Grishle boundary condition for the non-compact directions, while Neumann condition for the ghost. And I will choose an appropriate in, uh, the boundary condition for internal CFT to make everything consistent. So, uh, you know, for concreteness, I'm going to consider a single instant on wrapping a cycle. And uh, I will take its image to be itself under oriented folding. So it's going to be uh, all one uh, instant on. And uh, it is going to be useful to class count the zero modes. So the, these are the universal zero modes before oriented folding. You know, we have four translational modes associated with where we put the, the instant on the space, the non-compact directions. There are four Goldsteinos, which are the, associated with the broken supersymmetry. And there's going to be two, there are going to be two ghost modes associated with U1, uh, you know, reject U1 gauge field on the instant on. This is before the oriented folding. After oriented folding, one can show that in all one cases, we will have a Translational modes is going to survive. Two ghost streams are going to survive because you know we are break, you know, we are getting rid of the half of the supersymmetry. So it makes sense to get rid of the half of the ghost nodes. And actually, we will see that the ghost modes are eliminated if you want to keep those. Uh, so and uh, like this can be understood because U1 is becoming an all one gauge group, which is a discrete group. So there's not there cannot be any ghost modes. And these are universal ones. And for simplicity, I will assume there are now other uh, uh, zero modes associated with, say, like a uh, deformation of the, the instant in the internal Calabria, or you know, the, the, I, I'm, I'm not. I'm going to assume that these are absent for a moment, uh, but hopefully that that those can be included by our analysis later. Okay, so here, uh, as I said, like I want to compute this this analysis amplitude, and uh, the first thing that you do from the two D CFT perspective is that they write this as a uh, trace over uh, the Hilbert space of open strings, which is of this form. So, you know, we have a modular invariant measure, which is uh, run from zero to infinity to describe the length of the analyst, uh, so, you know, the circumference of the cylinder essentially. And we trace over the NS and R sectors with the appropriate space time fermion numbers and the uh, weights. And then one half because Rs are the fermions. So this is this is a formal expression because, as I said, because of the presence of the zero modes, which is L zero equals to zero, this as t goes to infinity, this is actually ambiguous. You know, this this diverges, and uh, 
we need to we need some procedure to make give some sense of this uh, uh, amplitude. So the, the way we are going to do it is through string field theory. And uh, the you know if you remember your usual KFD, the exponential of the bubble diagrams is basically given by the determinant of the kinetic term, which is can be written as a like a, you know the, the modes e to the um, e to the action uh, e to the kinetic term with some normalization. This is usual KFD. And in, it's also working in the string field theory language. We can just take the string filter kinetic terms in the gauge fixed form, which is single gauge is, you know, B0 equals to zero. And then write the kinetic term and the write this bubble diagrams as this way. So, you know, it's details are not really important, but the important thing here is that there's a procedure that can work that, uh, uh, that, that we can relate these two answers together. And then the, basically, yeah, these are the kinetic term and the, for the NS uh, open strings, R strings. You can understand this kinetic term from remembering the mass shell condition. You know, basically we are writing a propagator, you know, the, the inverse of this is propagator in string theory. So before I go on, like the equivalence between these two, these two answer, like a worksheet answer and string field theory answer, only holds when there are like a, the zero, there are zero, when there is a, when we don't have any zero modes in the spectrum, you know, then you can explicitly show this is equivalent to this actually. But uh, like the, the, as I said, this is ambiguous when there are zero modes. Uh, so what we can do is that we can regular, regularize our system in a way that the, take two instant tones where one of the more, you know, one of the, the one of the open string ends here, the other is ends here, and like uh, equate the, with the string field your answer and make the instant tone approach to get rid of the regular regulator and uh, use the string filter answer. And that, that's going to be our way of approaching this problem. We are basically going to uh, use string field theory answer when the worksheet is uh, ambiguous. And then in fact, like this, this, this type of, uh, this approach has been used in C plus one string theory by Eshoxan and then the later in the type two B theory. And in those, Approaches that the, the ends the since there are uh, larger supersymmetry ends and the, the together with the S duality answer was fixed and the, this approach the answer that the results that we get from this approach actually match those answers so it gives uh, we have a, like a previous evidence that this type of uh, using string filter actually works and gives the right answer in those cases and uh, now we can use when those uh, supersymmetry tricks and S duality tricks cannot be applied. And that's what we're going to do. So here's here's an answer for the exponential of the analyst. As you can see, I separated the zero modes as I said. Uh, well, I what I do is that the, the the I have a divergence associated with the zero modes, so I just separate them and put the massive contributions here. Also, I need to include some one half because of the this is a uh, this is a number perturbative effect due to all one gauge group, right? It's like it's mapping to each other. So. This is basically rearranging the answer that I'm going to get, but let me introduce this K0. So K0, again, it's just a, the, the trace over the massive modes of the 2D CFD, but the, for concreteness, we can collect them into this form, uh, which, which will be useful in future uh, when we consider like an exactly solvable model, for example. So let me explain the expressions one by one. So let's focus on these two terms, the, uh, the Z analyst and the Z mobile strip. So these are the, the usual uh, partition functions of the where one end is on the instanton and the other other end is either in the instanton itself or some space filling ray, because you know we are considering uh, uh, n equals one compactification with some orient fold. So there's going to be some space filling ray with all planes to cancel tab folds. So the Mobius strip is that the one that is one end is in instanton, the other is in the old plane. So to you know these individually are divergent, but uh, we can collect them together with putting some bounds to make the tuples cancel appropriately. You know, the one for should be familiar factor. And then uh, basically then the combine these integrals together. So these, but the, the problem here, uh, so the problem here will be, uh, you know, we separated the zero modes. So we need to adjust our expression for this to subtract the zero modes. And the second point here is actually the, does that, like we subtract this minus three, which is, you know, four translational mode minus one half with two. So this is going to eliminate the, the make the answer uh, finite in t goes to infinity, 
but if we like adjust the bounds to, uh, appropriately. So that is all good and fine now in the t goes to infinity limit, but we actually mess up t goes to zero limit, right? Because we already, the tadpoles cancel here and here, but if we add such a term, then the t goes to zero limit is like uh, kind of uh, messed up. So we need to add uh, this two terms together in order to, be, you know, in order to restore convergence in the t equals zero limit, which is a long string limit, the, the long closed string propagation, at the same time saving the t equals infinite limit. So at the end of the day, this is just a rewriting the massive contribution in a, in a, in a the, you know, in terms of the well-known quantities. But yeah, to, the, the, this is just a number at the end of the day. Okay, the next thing is that, as I said, like we have the zero mode integration and we need to evaluate those. And the first look at the bosonic contributions. So the here, these are the these are the modes coming from string field theory. And in general, these are related to the position of the instant term after some field redefinition. And here's the field redefinition that is required to do this. And uh, it is really, the G0 is that the open string coupling constant related to the instant term action in this fashion. So you know the, the the way we drive this expression is pretty simple. We just like uh, add the uh, zero modes to the amplitudes and demand that uh, like uh, when when position of the instant tone, the amplitude depends on the position of the instant tone of this form, in order to like describe uh, where where the instant tone is, and then you know basically read off the corresponding clear definition. And after you do that, we can evaluate our integral over the, this uh, uh, psi tilde. And that will produce the usual uh, delta function for the amplitudes. Okay, these were for the, the zero modes for the, uh, the bos bosonic zero modes, but they're also like a fermionic zero modes. And uh, if you don't saturate them with some like, uh, because you know, remember, this is going to multiply some disk amplitudes in this fashion. So we need to put some uh, zero modes of the, the Goldstinos in order to get a non zero answer. And uh, so we are, we, we are going to do that. And uh, we are going to denote the disk amplitude after we do that as alpha, uh, you know, a alpha beta. So you know, after we play these tricks, you know, combine these various factors, this is the our final result for the amplitude. So you know, there is a usual one half factor instant ton and the numbers that is that are coming from integration. So let let me be more concrete and try to consider a specific case of the the, the disk amplitude that we need to multiply this uh, bubble diagram. So which I'm going to consider the following in type two B model when I'm going to in introduce uh, you know the, the the vertex operator for a uh, the superpartner of a Kähler moduli insert goals in a zero mode as I mentioned uh, earlier to saturate the zero mode as I say that with the you know. Fermionic, fermionic integral, Grassmann integral. And uh, you can evaluate this amplitude. This is just uh, some amplitude computation. And this is the result that we get. And we can put it here and get this answer. Again, the, the numbers are not important. The important thing is that there are, there's a recipe to do that. Okay. So let me go to the superpotential, how to, how to read off the superpotential from this. So, you know, you can ask, okay, I know my low energy effective theory should be uh, n equals one d equals four super. I know there is a supersymmetry in d equals four and gravity, so it should be that. that. And then the, I can reverse engineer this amplitude and write an interaction term in this, uh, in this action. So I can say, okay, this is the interaction term that generates this amplitude. So some, somewhere in the n equals one d equals four super, there should be term like this. So in fact, there is like, uh, we look at the Sugra Lagrangian and we notice there's a term like this. And then the, we know that the expected form for the superpotential is like this, as I said in the introduction. Then basically when I, if I put it and try to match it, I, you know, this is a, some algebra, but after, you know, after I do this matching and the keeping the lead, leading order corrections, this is the answer I got. So, you know, this is a, in the same form, but uh, what I showed in the introduction, except for that I put G0 to relate to the real part of the action and the, I leave the phase ambiguous. But anyway, you know, this is a procedure, you know, well-defined procedure that uh, like basically we can reverse engineer our amplitude to read off the super potential with the correct normalization. So the one stringent test here will be to check the, the, the holo, to, to ask that this, if it is holomorphic in moduli, because as you can see, like there's a Keller potential here 
and there's some K0 that are coming from the massive contributions. And in a priori, it's not obvious if it is holomorphic. Uh, so that, you know, that, that's the next thing that I'm going to check. And this is the answer to this question is actually yes, you know, this is the holomorphic. And but the, there are two things that we need to establish first. Uh, first thing is that we need to relate to take the instant on like this amplitude, uh, which is a one the open string one end and on the instant on others in the space filling brain, and re replace the instant on with some space filling brain. You know, changing the d boundary condition in non-compact space time to in, in non-compact space time to normal boundary condition and turn on some flux. So we need to establish this relation which I will tell more about it in, in a moment. And then after we establish that, we realize this uh, amplitude is actually uh, related to the, the one loop corrections of the gauge, uh, you know, gauge threshold corrections on this, uh, the gauge theory that is living on the, the brain that we put instead of instant one. And then we can use the, the top Lewinsky Lewis formula to, to relate the, the instant one amplitudes to the something, uh, some function that we know holomorphic some holomorphic function of the moduli. You know, we can do that. Like basically we are saying that, okay, instant on to the, the one loop uh, correction to the, uh, the, the coupling constant of some brain. And then I can use the formula that I know from Sugra. And again, like this is, this is a give another way, you know, give it after we do like push the expressions around, we find that the, the super potential okay. can be written. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, five minutes before yeah. questions. All right. All right, so uh, yeah, this is this is what we get, and basically what happens is that the holomorphic, the, the holomorphy of super potential becomes equivalent to holomorphy of this uh, gauge kinetic function. Or again, like this this is a so these are this relation is well known. This relation is also like a guess, but uh, we we haven't found a first principle proof of this. So we so this is what we proved in our one of our appendices. So in the original ideas in this paper by this uh, by these people. Um, so the, the idea, you know, to proving this type of relation involved uh, detecting the underlying super conformal algebra the, describing the Calabia, uh, then the decomposing the, uh, the this amplitude in terms of uh, characters of a representation, and you know we can do this 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 the, for for the instant on amplitude. We can do it for the the one that uh, we replace with the space filling uh, brain uh, with the, some flux is turning on, turned on. And I mean, there are many subtleties with this approach. We need to include momentum correctly. We need to replace O1 with the SPK. You know, we are not replacing a one brain. We are actually replacing with the K brains. And we need to check, you know, keep track of the signs appropriately. There's a lot of one halves and et cetera. But again, the, once the dust is settled, what we find is there is a common factor of minus eight pi square and the relation that I showed earlier, which is that this, this, this relation holds true since it's true for every, you know, every representation. Okay, so let me conclude my talk. So today I described how to read off uh, the D instant on contribution to super potential for type two theorem on Calabia oriented faults. Uh, you know, especially I showed how to fix the normalization using string field theory. Uh, which hasn't been done before as far as we know. And uh, we've seen that this, uh, I, I showed that it's a holomorphic function of the moduli. So there are a couple things that we can do next. So here I just provide the recipe for computing this normalization. So we, this K0, we haven't evaluated. Uh, this, uh, remember this is the massive, the, the part that are coming from massive contributions. And for this, we need to know the spectrum, uh, but you know, for general Calabria models, probably that's, uh, that's, that's, a, that's a hard problem. So what one can, can do is that to start with some exactly solvable model, like some orbifolds or some gap there model, and then perturb around it. Actually, that's what we plan to do next. And then the other question that is kind of interesting to ask, like, uh, can we do something like a Rorschach instant on to extra, you know, compare our answer under some dualities, maybe try to fix some NS5 amplitudes in this way too. And also like another formal question we can ask is that since now we are computing the, the, the amplitudes around the, some of the instanton, we might try to do some research because now we have extra information about the non-perturbative amplitude. So yeah, this might give some in, in, interesting insight to the non-perturbative string theory. Uh, so this is all I'm going to say today. So thanks for listening.
All right. Thank you very much, Ataka. Other questions? Yes, Jim, please. Uh, great talk. Um, just a quick question. Could you comment a little bit more about how you might see resurgence entering the game here? You only mentioned it briefly at the end. I'd love for you to elaborate. Yeah, it's uh, so it's it's uh, just an idea. The idea is the following. So usually when we have just a string per perturbated string amplitudes, we cannot borrow resonance. It's uh, it's uh, too uh, you know there is a issue with the asymptotic key, but now we can look at the like uh, this extra contributions and try to like uh, restrict the trans series. So this is just an idea, like uh, something that may be possible, but at the same time, it's just uh, like a uh, maybe wild speculation at this point. So, because the all, I, the, all I'm saying is that we have an extra information about uh, non-perturbative amplitudes, which may help if you try to do something like that. And solve some of the summability issues in a way that resurgence- Ex Exactly, right? Because now we have e to the minus one over g uh, corrections. With the right uh, numbers for the normalization, which are which you know this you know we know that the like type of the amplitudes we are going to get, but the, since the, we didn't know normalization before, yes. uh, it was hard to like uh, do this you know usual matching thing in this amplitude. I, I guess for this to work, you really need to be sure that you have all of the corrections probably in any relevant background in the theory. But but the hope is that yeah. okay, very cool. That's an awesome idea. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, also I showed that like, you know, this is, it might be better to do it for the large enough dimension first to get rid of this like a Euclidean type of, uh, you know, Euclidean brain effects first. Because we also have the other things. Yeah. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, Luca. Uh, hello. Hey, so thank you. First of all, uh, thanks a lot for the, for the talk. It's very interesting. So a question regarding the normalization. So, do you find any dependence on the complex structure model line on this normalization? Uh, so we haven't looked at these issues. Like I said, we were uh, completely ag agnostic about the, uh, the, the type of, uh, you know, type of theory that we consider. We said we use type 2B theory, but uh, it works in type 2A. So we haven't looked at the, these issues, but uh, uh, the, yeah, the, we, yeah, we haven't looked at these issues like this in my honest answer. But, but then, sorry, I don't understand. So, uh, if you, if there is any dependence of the complex structure model, then the normalization cannot be fixed. Uh, yes. Yeah, so this is related. Sorry, uh, this is related with the fact that we have just given you the recipe. But the next step will be to actually carry out this computation mm -hmm. and then evaluate the complex structure dependence in in solvable models. This is work in progress. Ah, I, I see. So, sorry, because I saw some formulas, some explicit formulas with some uh, specific numbers. So, in those numbers, there is something which can be, uh, which yes. can depend uh, on the complex structure moduli. Right, right. K naught can depend on complex structure moduli in type to be. We're, we're, yeah, this yeah, is exactly. What... You know, we, we expect that it to be depending on the complex structure moduli in general, right? and no dependence on the Kähler moduli. It might be formula. You, you show the formula now with the normalization. Uh, this one, uh, so this one, say, right? That's the holomorphic one. Okay. What, what do you when you say that you fix the normalization? In which point you 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 allow for the for the residual uh, dependence on the complex structure model? Uh, so yeah, the, the complex structure moduli is in principle is encoded in this one and this one. Uh, I mean, yeah, like they, they should. So it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a funny business because like, uh, since we are doing worksheet computations, we usually deal with the most. And it's a, it's a hard question to see where the complex structure dependence coming from or how these things cancel with each other. So, you know, I, I don't have any intuition about that, but certainly, you know, at the end of the day, we know in, for example, type 2 b models that this should depend only on the complex structure moduli, right? But yeah, uh, why I was asking. Hmm? That's why I was asking if, in, yeah. uh, I mean, fixing the normalization uh, of something uh, which can depend on our moduli. Uh, mm -hmm. it, uh, yeah, okay, maybe I should say in the following sense. So we are looking at, the, like, this is phi zero, right? We are just like looking around some web for the moduli. We're just picking a web, and there, there is a you know we're picking a point in the moduli space, 
and there's a spectrum associated with, uh, you know, when we look at the 2D CFD around that module, uh, the, around that background, and there's an associated spectrum, right? Spectrum depends on the, the point that we picked. Yeah, and yeah. around that point, we fix the moduli, which is, uh, which can be done for any point. Okay, thanks, Carl. Thank you. All right, there was a question in the chat whether you have an ETA on when the paper will be out. Uh, soon, I think Manky. Uh, okay, you don't have anything to add to this. But yeah, uh, probably it's going to be uh, out like uh, late March, early April, hopefully. You know, that's, that's our guess, I guess. All right. Okay, we're also uh, out of time. So let's uh, thank Atakan and Manky again for their very nice talks. And I'll see you next week, I guess.